Please begin t today's lesson by lying down on your back and take a moment as ever just to notice the contact into the floor. Notice how your two legs are lying, how the pelvis is resting. It's very common to find that one side of the pelvis is slightly heavier into the floor compared to the other. And then notice how your two shoulders are resting and how you've chosen to place the arms. So um, how much of your arm is actually down in contact with the, the floor on, a, on either side? Um, again, it's very common to find if your shoulders and chest are a bit tighter that it's just the elbows and the tips of the fingers are down. Um, but for others, they might, f might find that much more of the upper arm is down and um, the for forearm too. So just observe that as we begin the lesson. And then please just roll your head very, very lazily from side to side. And as you roll the head from side to side, just notice, do you tend to grip the jaw front to one side? Um, do you tend to grip the teeth to the upper teeth? And maybe if you were just to allow the jaw to soften, for there to be a little space between the lower teeth and the upper teeth, then that ability to roll the head easily from side to side would be um, improved. And then please um, bend the knees and come to lie on your um, for me, it's the left-hand side because I'm um, to face the camera. And you'll see I've taken some support to put underneath my head. Um, just probably one is sufficient. Um, the idea here is that um, your head isn't hanging um, and causing you strain in the, in the neck muscles. So that if, if that is happening, take one or two... Um, pillows or pads just to give you a bit of extra comfort so that there's no strain. Now my underneath arm, my left arm, is stretched out in front of me at shoulder height and then um, bend the knees with the two knees stacked on top of each other and the two feet too. Now again I'm keeping my glasses on so I can see the camera but um, I wouldn't be doing this with my glasses on if I was just practicing um, on my own. Now have your um, right arm, uh, for me it's my right arm, just resting on the side and just notice when you do come on to the side how you just sense, sense your spine and your positioning. Um, it might be again if there's a lot of holding going on in the front, can you see how that pulls my head forward, so my head is much more in line with my knees than say here where it'd be more in line um, with my tailbone. So just notice that without necessarily trying to correct it. And then um, with your arm on the on the side, just allow this arm to, to rest. My glasses are particularly annoying in this, this position. So um, once the arm is just resting on your side, see if you can begin to do a small movement of just bringing your shoulder, your top shoulder, forward and back to its starting position. So you're just getting the idea that you can bring the shoulder forward and then back to its starting position. So there's no effort involved, you're just trying to make this a very easy movement. And um, notice, so again, as it, we've just introduced a movement, are you tending to hold the breath? If that's the case, can you just let your breath be nice and easy? And um, uh, one way of doing this is to inhale the shoulder forward, exhale just to let it release back, or you can try exhaling it forward and inhaling it back. It doesn't really matter so long as you know which option you're, you're choosing. And as you bring the shoulder forward and just back to its starting position, notice are you actually bringing it forward, straight forward in relationship to yourself, or are you perhaps going forward and up, or forward and down, 
um, which uh, you're, you're just trying to bring it straight forward and back. And then as you're, as you're doing that, um, notice again how you're doing it. So one way of doing this is just to roll the whole body, of course, to bring the shoulder forward and back. Again, that is, that's an option. But if it is the option you've chosen, see if you can sort of quieten everything down and see if you can just see if you can differentiate the shoulder coming forward and back before you involve the ribs. And um, notice, does your head want to roll a little bit as the shoulder come, come forward and back? Or are you tending to keep the head very still? And notice also as the shoulder is coming forward, this long thin bone, your clavicle or collarbone, how the outer portion of the collarbone is coming forward in a little arc and down and then back. Now, once you've done a few movements like that, um, begin to take your shoulder this time backwards and then back to the middle. So you're, you're just directing the shoulder back and then back to the middle. And just noticing, do you do this on an inhalation or an exhalation? Just taking the shoulder back and then bringing it back to its starting position. Again, I'm just at the moment trying to just discover can I just really differentiate the shoulder to, to do this? Um, and you'll need to check and be honest with yourself that you're truly letting the arm be a passenger. What I often see in class is if the shoulders are a bit held, people will try and substitute a movement, lift the elbow and try and bring, bring the bring the shoulder forward by moving the arm and of course then the shoulder isn't actually moving it's the arm that's moving so I'm just trying to keep the arm very passive as I take the shoulder back and then pause and then this time begin to take the shoulder forward back to its start and then back behind you so it's coming forward back to its start and then back and um, just forward back to its start and back and I can feel now um, not just the shoulder but how my chest is wanting to turn a little bit so I'm going to let my head and eyes roll a little bit with the movement so I, I can now feel my weight shifting a little bit on the ribs under underneath me. Now pause again. Again you can do, if you're doing this at home, you can always pause the recording, you can do more of the movements or less of the movements. I'm going to keep the lesson going at a reasonable pace just for the sake of the of the recording so it's not too long. Now with the shoulder at its starting position I'm just thinking of bringing the shoulder up to my ear and then just letting it release. So I bring it up as if I'm shrugging it up to the ear and then release. Now again when you try this just notice are you bringing it straight up to the ear or are you in fact deviating forward and up to do it. So see if you can just find it coming straight up to the ear and then release up to the ear and then release. And now I'm going to combine these directions. So I come forward, up in an arc towards the ear, take the shoulder back and behind me and then I come straight through the middle. So I come up in an arc towards the ear behind me and then forward and up. So just keep this half circle going just trying to make it as smooth and as even as possible. Again, if the head wants to roll a little bit to do this, that's absolutely fine. 
just trying to make it a clear half circle. And then once I've done it a, f um, a few times in one direction, I'm going to re reverse. So I go back, up in an arc towards the ear, trying to bring it forward through the middle, up in an arc towards my ear, forward through the middle. So again, just trying to make this as smooth as possible. And you'll see my arm is moving, but hopefully it's moving in response to what's going in the shoulder, as opposed to me trying to move the shoulder from the arm. Now pause, and then just let yourself take a quick rest on the, on the back, just to notice what the effect of those movements were. And I'm feeling um, this right shoulder already a little bit heavier, a little bit looser into the floor. It's a very, very nice feeling. And then please bend the knees again and come back to lie on the same side. Uh, in the same position. And now this time with the top arm, begin to take the shoulder down towards the right hip or the top hip. So down. So as it goes down, I can feel a slight stretch or lengthening in my neck muscles. And then I release, just taking it down and release. And I, and I can feel, you can always put your hand, the other hand on underneath the armpit area, I can feel these ribs here softening to help me take the shoulder down, shoulder down. And because these ribs soften, I can therefore feel my ribs underneath pressing into the floor a little bit more clearly. Again, you see, if the ribs are very held, they're going to get in the way of that movement, and it might therefore be a very little, small movement. So see if you can just again let the breath be nice and easy to let that shoulder, shoulder move. So these ribs soften. And now, um, begin to go in the other direction. So I come all the way up to the ear, and then I think of sliding the shoulder away from the ear, up to the ear, and away, up to the ear, and away. When it comes up to the ear, I can feel these underneath ribs lifting a little bit away from the floor. Maybe you can feel that too. And then begin to combine all these directions. So Feldenkrais, you'll know by now, was extremely fond of clocks and circles. So see if we can make a circle with that top shoulder. So it comes forward in an arc up towards the ear, in an arc behind me and down, coming forward in an arc back behind me. And again, I'm just letting the head respond to this movement of the circle. Now, after a few circles in one direction, then reverse the direction of your circle. So, you're just trying to make a smooth and, for me, as large a circle as I can. And if I want to make it bigger, of course, I can begin to allow the chest to roll. And then, once I've done a few of those, I'm going to pause Again, just have a quick check on the back to see how that, that all feels. Again, nice sense of length from my breastbone all the way to the outer corner of my, my right shoulder. And not just the right shoulder, but I f actually I feel, it's a little bit strange, I feel a tiny bit shorter on my right hand side. and. The right side of my pelvis has come down a little bit closer towards the floor. Um, once you've done that, then please bend the knees and come to lie on your 
left hand side again if you're doing it on the left hand side first. So uh, we've explored circles with the shoulder and now we're going to look at some of the movements of the of the hip. So I've got my hand on the my outer hip here. You can easily just have the arm but I'm using this just to show you and I'm going to now ask you to bring the side of the pelvis closer closer to the right shoulder or the top shoulder and then release it and think of sending the side of the pelvis away from the shoulder and when you allow that to happen can you sense or feel that the movement of the pelvis is involving all of the ribs and the spine so just see if you can do that and notice as you're doing it um, what's happening to the lower back. Are you truly bringing the pelvis up and down or are you in fact actually pushing the lumbar area forward? Are you going more into that six o'clock position that we talked about in the earlier lessons? Now pause, just rest on the side. And this time, could you think of taking your top knee a little bit forward and a little bit back? So I'm going forward with the top knee and a little bit back with the top knee. Forward and back. And you will really need to slow this down to check um, that you're keep managing to keep the feet to get together and quiet and that your knee is actually going forward in relationship to yourself and back. Quite often people will do this kind of thing to try and they think they're moving the knee forward but in fact they're moving it up um, or they um, begin to move the whole of the, the leg. See if you can keep the feet together and just move the top knee forward and back. So notice I'm not holding my shoulder, but I'm not having everything go together. If that is the case, see if you can slow it down, maybe go a little bit um, smaller in terms of the movement. I'm just trying to see can you I differentiate the pelvis, the pelvis from the chest. And you can see even though I'm talking about the knee going forward and back, I'm not lifting the knee to contract any of the leg muscles. The movement is actually coming from the pelvis and the, and the spine. Good. Pause and then take a rest. So you've probably heard me mention before in lessons the purposes of these rests is not um, just to chill out or flake out. It's really just to give you an opportunity to sense the effect of the movements um, on your on yourself. And one of the good places to do that is whilst lying down on the floor because the floor gives you very good feedback if you if you pay attention to it again. Okay. And it's interesting, I am definitely feeling shorter on my right hand side than my left hand side. So if I roll my head a little bit from side to side, I can feel it's easier to roll my head now to the right, to the left. Easier in the sense that my nose and chin go in a very smooth arc towards my right shoulder whereas when I come back to the left I feel it's not quite the same turning and one of the reasons I suspect for that is because my ribs have been involved in the movements earlier the connection of the rolling of the head into the ribs is much clearer now and please pause, bend the knees, and once more come to lie on your 
left hand side have the right arm just resting on your side now I'm going to try we did a circle with the shoulder I'm going to see if I can do a circle with the pelvis here so I go forward down and away from me behind me and then up towards the shoulder I'm moving this hand out the way so that you can see so I'm going back up towards the shoulder forward down and around just seeing can I make again this circle as smooth as possible and even though my shoulder is staying fairly quiet I can feel all the ribs again the chest involved in this movement and now I'm going to try and reverse the direction of the of the circles okay. pause just take a rest on the side for a moment and now for the kind of fun fun part apologies if it doesn't look so pretty so I'm going to have the right arm resting on my side now side and now I want to think of as I take the knee forward can I take the shoulder back? And as I bring the shoulder forward, can I take the, the knee back? So knee forward, shoulder back. Shol shoulder forward as the knee goes back. Just seeing can I find those two different directions. And again, you might suddenly find as you're doing this, you're gripping the jaw or holding the breath. So if that's happening, just slow it down. And then pause. And this time, see if you can bring the pelvis and the shoulder closer together. And then further away from each other. Closer together. And then further away from each other. So I'm drawing the shoulder up to the ear, pelvis is going away from the shoulder, and then I'm trying to bring them close together. So that my ribs on the right hand side all concertina together, those ribs underneath are pressing down and have opened into the floor, and then to go take the shoulder and the pelvis away from each other as though I'm creating a bridge all the way underneath my bottom side so really, um, although these instructions are given in terms of the shoulder and the hip or the pelvis, can you see it's really um, much of the movement is coming, if you allow it to, from your centre, from your core. Good. Now, I'm going to try and do some circles. So I think of the knee going forward the shoulder back hip down as the shoulder comes up hip back as the shoulder comes forward hip up as the shoulder goes down so in other words we're making circles in opposite directions and at an equal rate and tempo uh, of the shoulder and the hip and you'll need to slow this down <laughs> to really make sure that you are doing what you think you're doing um, rather than just falling into a habitual way of doing. So I'm trying to bring the shot as the hip comes up and the shoulder down, that top side shortens again, just trying to make some very small circles in opposite direction. You can see how so much movement is being brought into the whole of my system to do this. Now I'm going to try and reverse these. So hip back, shoulder forward, hip down, shoulder up, hip forward, shoulder back, hip up as the shoulder comes down. So okay, just do what you can do at home, slowing things down if necessary to see if you can find this differentiation which is really if you think about it it's what happens in walking in well-organized walking 
this counterbalance through the chest and the pelvis, the shoulder and the, and the hip. Now, please leave it alone and take a rest on your back. So definitely feeling more weight down into my right hand side. Again, if I roll my head, it feels again still a lot easier, a lot smoother to the right hand side, but not quite as um, uneasy as it was to the left hand side. Now, um, pause, bend the knees, and we're going to explore that on the other side. And I'm just going to turn around so that I'm still facing the camera. So, come to lie on your other side. Again, just check when you do come to lie on the side, your organisation, do you find yourself shortening in the front of the body to bring the head forward or is the back of the head more or less in the line with the tailbone have your top arm just resting on the side and this time with the top shoulder think of um we're going to do slightly different movements or a different sequence this time start by bringing the shoulder up to the ear and then think of reaching the shoulder away from the ear up to the ear, away from the ear, in up to the ear, and away from the ear. And I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but I think because of all we've been doing on the other side, I can feel my pelvis getting involved already. That's it. In the sense, I can feel all these ribs shortening to help take the shoulder down and the ribs underneath becoming lighter to help bring the shoulder up to the ear. It's amazing how the learning has transferred to the other side. Now pause and think of bringing the top shoulder forward to its starting position and then back. Forward, starting position and back. And you can allow the head to roll a little bit with the movement. I can feel a lot more movement going down in my spine, my chest becoming involved, but still managing to get that differentiation in the shoulder. So again, just check that you're not trying to do this from the elbow or um, stiffening through the hands and the, and the wrist, just still going forward and back and then pause and see if you can begin to turn this into a circle. So I come forward in an arc towards the ear, take it in an arc back behind me, down, forward, up in an arc towards the ear and away from me, coming forward, up in an arc and behind. And then I reverse the direction of the circles. Just trying to make them as smooth as possible. Good. And then um, pause and um, I'll just rest on the side for a moment. Please bring your attention to your top, top knee. And this time begin to start with the movement of taking the knee a little bit forward and a little bit back. So it comes forward relative to the underneath knee and then behind the underneath knee. It slides a little bit back, forward and back. And just notice again, are you actually going forward with the knee and back with the knee or are you tending to substitute an upward direction um, with the knee and the, I'm looking again just to keep the shoulder top shoulder fairly quiet so, which is not to say holding it still but just letting it um, relax really as the top knee goes forward and back 
and then pause. Now I think of the other um, two directions, so coming up to the ear, I'll just get my hand out of the way so you can see, and then further away from me. So up to the shoulder or the ear, and then further away from me. Now just notice as you're bringing the hip up, is your top shoulder going up too? And as the hip goes down, is the top shoulder going down? Um, and if that is the case, see if you can, can keep the shoulder fairly quiet. So, um, in fact, as the, the hip comes up, my shoulder is sinking down a little bit towards the hip. And as the hip goes away, it's going a little bit further away. That's it. So I'm deliberately thinking of letting my ribs get involved to bring the um, hip up and away from me. So I'm creating that space underneath me to help send the pelvis away and then closing that gap underneath me to bring the hip closer. So and now I'm just going to try a few circles in one direction with the hip or the pelvis. So just imagining I'm tracing a circle, a circle, as generous a circle as I can make it, keeping the jaw relaxed, the breath nice and easy, and then reverse the direction of these circles. Now, if you think about, I'm just going to pause there, if you think about it, what these, the, this lesson is helping with is your ability to step take a step down on the step see how if I reach for a step I'm reaching with my whole body whole body rather than just trying to keep it in the in the leg and keeping the back very stiff so um, as I said in the introduction balance is expressed in the whole system in your spine your muscles everything is involved in balance not just the inner ear. So I've done some circles with the pelvis in one direction and then the other. Now I'm going to see if we can combine the shoulder and hip circles but going in opposite direction. So shoulder forward, knee back, shoulder up, pelvis away from me, shoulder back, knee forward, etc, etc. And you might need to find you might find that you need to focus a little bit more when doing it on one side than the other. Just aiming to get circles going in the opposite direction and trying to keep the circles going as expansive as possible. Good. Once you've done a few in one direction, if you need to have a rest, do so, but otherwise, see if you can take the circles in the other direction. Just nice and easy. If they get them wrong, if you find suddenly shoulder and hip are going together, just slow it down or take a rest, check the jaw is relaxed, that you're breathing. Just see if you can find these um, circles at your own pace. Great. Once you've done that, then please again, just leave it alone and take a rest. And then when you come to rest, you can just roll the head a little bit from side to side. And even though I've not done as many variations on my left hand side, I can definitely feel things have balanced out. I can feel, again, as my head is rolling from side to side, I can feel that um, a shift of weight through my spine into my chest towards the right hand side as I roll my head towards the right and then vice versa. So I'm not trying to do that, but it's what's happening as the connections are all, have all been been clarified. See often in lying down the chest gets held, the shoulders are held, um, but once you can release 
release that tension and find those connections in this fairly simple way it all feels a lot clearer, a lot smoother. So once you've finished the lesson please bring the legs to standing um, and roll to the side and then eventually of course come to sit and to, to stand and I'd really sort of encourage you to take a moment when you come to standing and take a few steps maybe around your room just to take your time to see if you can feel the shift of weight going on how that's what's happening in your spine and your chest as you take one step and then another I uh, hope you enjoyed the lesson if you have any comments or questions then please leave them in the section below if you like the video please hit the thumbs up button and if you haven't already subscribed to my youtube channel then please hit the subscribe button